Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hey there, everyone out there in podcast land, and welcome to another sports, sports podcast. I'm Jordan Pomaville, and joining us as always is Phil Ranta, the sports outsider. Hey, it's good to be back, but there's only there's only two of us back. I know, we're doing pauses in the intro again. Yeah, that must mean one thing, we finally murdered Joel. <laughs> oh, took no. us long enough. It fi- it's about freaking time. Long time listeners of this serialized podcast, we're dying for like when will that character meet its end oh it's about time i've watched the hunger games catching fire and i want to kill wait i didn't follow that on the hunger games they're just like it's people just killing each other oh yeah 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 kids right yeah joel's like uh like our kid that we just murdered (laughs) he's our child we murdered we were making him do tricks right uh, for our own amusement yeah to keep down the the poor populace right right exactly through hegemony hegemony (laughs) Da, da 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 (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> anyway so joel's gone yeah but you're back i'm back and better than ever i'm back from my cruise slash motorcycle lessons oh you're on a cruise yeah before that i was on a family cruise disney cruise disney cruise yeah because we have a three-year-old now in the family my brother has a three-year-old daughter so what's interesting about this is you have a family you are you are a a, a grown-ass man i'm a grown-ass man yeah you have a, a family patriarch yep. your dad and, and a mom a matriarch yep right and the three-year-olds calling the shots. Yeah. Ultimately. No, geez, yeah. There was, uh, so there was seven adults and then the, the child on board. And uh, we spent most of the time, everybody just kind of staring at the child going in the pool. <laughs> really? Yeah. And just seeing what she wanted to do. Yeah, ultimately. exactly. That, I think that's kind of the what having a kid's all about, right? Is the kid gets to dictate the family vacation. Yeah, and then you just kind of take joy in watching your child have joy. Yeah, right? I don't I don't know. It sounds fishy to it me. It seems Phil. like it kind of is true though. Uh, maybe. Kind of true. All right. And 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 you you took motorcycle lessons. I did. This is vaguely sports related. Yeah. What? I'm I'm a I'm a road hog now. Really? Well, nah. Well, I'm, I'm a hog. <laughs> I, I, that felt I'm like the a Harley lot of Owners group. That's hog. So that is the hogs. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm a hog. Yeah. And I uh and I uh, passed. So yep. So you, you're officially in. I got to go to the DMV and get my license. And would you say that this is the most sporting thing you're now doing? Yes, 100%. Because you're a motorcyclist. Yeah. It's motorsports. It's, yeah, I'm a moto, moto, not motocross. You're a motorhead, maybe? Yeah, I'm a motorhead. Hey, so speeds. <laughs> Didn't follow it's that. It's a motorhead song. <laughs> oh. The motorhead's are also a popular band. Hey, they're a rock and roll yeah, outfit. Seven and eleven. <laughs> Tim Tebow Year-end news roundup. Tim Tebow, year-end news roundup. Brought to you by Menthos. Feel the rush in your mouth. Merry Christmas! Wow. A special holiday drop from our friends at Mentos. That was really great. The Tim Tebow news does not stop, Phil. You sound like that person was having a heart attack, though, <laughs> and really struggling at the end to get it out. Well, you know, maybe we'll, get, we'll be able to check on them when we end the segment. I sure hope so. All right. Tim Tebow offered contract by Italy's Milano Seamen. That sounds like it's offensive for two reasons. Subheadline writer dies of joke aneurysm. (laughs) Ha ha! This is the latest in a series of offers from non-NFL suitors, and it comes from the Milano Seamen of the Italian Federation of American Football. So this is in Milan. Oh, I believe the city name of Milano, not like like a cookie. Well, I guess it could be like a cookie. Milano cookies. Yeah. That's how what that's what I think of when I hear Milano. Is you know, recently baby. I was I was in San Francisco. Yeah. Drove up to Sausalito. There you go. Talked to some locals. Nice. And when they're honest with you, they will say the Sausalito cookie was both the best and worst thing that ever happened to that. Really town. worst. Best and worst. I've never heard of anyone ever happened say a Sausalito cookie is nothing but the best. Well, in terms of the town, Sausalito. Right. I mean, you got to think of how this affected them, their economy, yeah. perception of the city. Or for that matter, when Judge Ito was in the news, that probably hurt him during the O.J. Simpson trial. They were like, oh, hey, Salsa Ito. So Tim Tebow's been offered a job uh, for this Italian football team, 
And their, uh, their president, Marco Moody, says, The offer has been made to his agent, and now we're awaiting for a response. We would be happy to have him. <laughs> he sounded like a bit like Dracula there. Yeah, he's, oh, they'll be happy to have him. To suck his blood. <laughs> he was offered $200,000 on Wednesday to join the eight-team league. But here's the thing. They know he's not going to take it. Right. He's been offered now by the Omaha Beef. Yeah, the, the uh, Kiss. The L.A. Kiss. Yeah. Uh, the Montreal Alouettes, who own his rights but were not interested in him. Right. All these other teams. It's just a cheap publicity stunt by the Milano Seamen. Yeah, but it's effective. Yeah, I just feel bad for the true Milano fans who, who – I just hope they don't fall for this bullshit move and demand their team make some real changes this offseason and improve the team. I would think that they would, though. What? Sorry. Wouldn't they want – oh, I – I'm just saying I think he's just drumming up publicity for his own fans. I see. Not for Tim Tebow, not for us. I think Tim Tebow would do well, though, in an Italian-American football league. Oh, right? no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. I'm just saying you know he's not going to take it. He right. hasn't That's taken any true. of these offers. I'd take it. I'd take if, it twice. Hey, if the Milanos are listening to me, if all you seamen out there fills for you, right? <laughs> Tim Tebow's brother turns DUI into speeding ticket. Uh oh. Yeah, this is an old news story that was recently broke by muckraking journalists at TMZ. Back in 2011, when Tim Tebow was playing with the Denver Vo Broncos, uh, you remember this because every week Joel would criticize him, and every yeah. week Tebow would play even better. I remember that. Joel was wrong again, per <laughs> use. Uh, so his brother, Peter Tebow. Ah, P he's Pete Bo. <laughs> Pete Bo. He's there. He's 26 at the time. He's living with Tim Tebow, mm. and he's attending seminary school. Hey. Which probably made Tim extremely jealous. I imagine. He's like, I'm just a football player. Oh, oh, he's darn. got my dream job. Anyway, so TMZ reports that Peter was pulled over in Denver, Colorado at uh, 1.43 a.m. June 10th, 2011. Cops say he was blazing through town going 90 in a 45 zone. What? And straddling two lanes of traffic. Straddling lanes of traffic? That's not Christian. Mm -mm, that is no behavior for a man of the cloth. No, you're not allowed to straddle anything. No, uh, absolutely not. And when a, when a cop approached the vehicle, he observed Peter Tebow's eyes were bloodshot and watery, his speech was slurred and mumbled, and his pupils were enlarged. Uh-oh, you know what that means. Someone's, he was crying. <laughs> I was going to say, someone's having a great time. <laughs> Could be crying, too. Uh, so he asked uh, Peter if he was on any medication. He goes, yeah, I had some Percocet earlier. Uh -oh. I had two pills in the morning and two pills in the afternoon. He later said, I had two pills a couple hours ago. In the report, the cops said he smelled like booze, uh, but Peter refused to take a road sobriety test and a blood alcohol test. Uh -oh. And apparently in Colorado, you can do that. Really? Just be like, no thanks. Yeah, I think in California, they <laughs> can run, run, your run. damn car. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't think you can pull that shit out here. Yeah, they would beat you with their clubs because it's the LAPD. <laughs> right, but he's eventually arrested. But here's the most mirac miraculous thing is uh, they take down his uh, DUI, his charge. They move it down to just reckless driving. Really? Which was good. Which reckless driving, a uh, speeding ticket for going 20 to 24 over, even though he was going 45 over. Yeah. It's a 100% increase. I think he should be thrown in jail to throw away the key. Tim Tebow year end news roundup brought to you by Mentos. Feel the rush in your mouth. I feel better. Hey, how hey, about that? He feels better. He's doing better. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. What do we got in the show today, Phil? Uh, we've got uh, an interview with a very interesting guy. He Are is you... the parking lot coordinator for the Super Bowl. Oh, geez. Okay, so this is deal. at MetLife Stadium. Yeah. So he's the guy in charge of the parking lot? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we could ask him about, uh, I mean, there's a lot of cars. Yeah. Big the game. Big game. I think that that's – we're going to get a real inside look into the behind the scenes of the Super Bowl. All right. And we got a weird sport? You're goddamn right we do. All right. On to the news, news, news. And now it's time for the news, news, news on the Sports, Sports, Sports podcast with Jordan, Phil, and that's it. News, news, news. All right. I like that. Jordan, Phil, and that's it. It's got a ring to it. Maybe we should keep it that way. It's quick. It is. It's a little it's faster. It's snappy. Uh, Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski is out for the season. Now how do you feel about using your third-round draft pick on him in your fantasy league? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't use any draft picks on anybody. It doesn't matter if it's a PPR league, Phil. It was stupid. DDR, Dance Dance Revolution? PPR, that's point per reception. Ah, nice. This is our nerdy. <laughs> Not your nerdy. In last Sunday's game against the Cleveland Browns, Rob Gronkowski tore his ACL, his MCL, as well as CLs P through Z. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just that's so, so he just tore every CL in his body. That is correct. The 24-year-old Gronkowski mixed the first six games this season 
while he recovered from a uh, previous surgeries, and he only played seven games this year. What a weekie! He's well, a this guy, week, he's a this guy's a great player. He sent a huge contract. He's a great receiver. He's one of Tom Brady's top targets for the Patriots, but he only played seven games this year. He has four touchdowns, six hundred yards, and he's just no. And here's the thing: he's just a very injury prone guy. He's just made of glass. He is. He like is, the end of Unbreakable. Spoiler alert. Oh, jeez, Phil. You know I haven't seen. I that. know. I'm way behind totally on my shalomanam. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. had to finish your own punchline. I did. Anyway, Rob Gronkowski is no stranger to in- injuries. He's more like a fuck buddy to them. <laughs> and let's take a trip down memory lane. He had ankle surgery following the 2011 season. Oh, in 2012, he broke his left forearm in oh, week 11. I remember that. He was out six weeks. Then he re-injured the same arm the first quarter the of, first the quarter of the first Patriots play. first place. first place. I remember that. <laughs> this oh. required surgery, and he missed the rest of 2012. That brings us to 2013. Earlier this year, Gronkowski was diagnosed with, with an infection in his forearm. On the one what? He had, on the one he had broke twice. No. Yeah, so they had to do a surgery on that, mm-hmm. and they cleaned it up. And then after that, they did another surgery on it where they put some hardware in. <laughs> there we go. Bionic arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then for his summer vacation, Gronkowski rounded out the offseason with back surgery. Ooh. Yeah. What's wrong with this dude? <laughs> what <laughs> happened? Was <laughs> well, he a bubble boy? Seemingly. Now, see, the thing, if this was the future... Yeah. These surgeries would make Rob Gronkowski an indestructible super football robot. Right, like RoboCop, only Robo football player. Right, right. Cop. But this isn't the future. So he'll continue to become more and more brittle with right. each surgery and each injury. Oh, if I was playing if I was playing on the other team against him, I'd hit, I'd try to hit him real hard. Well, yeah, that's what this happened this past game. A guy hit him in the knees because you can't hit him high anymore. Yeah. Remember we covered this in a news story yep, before. Can't hit him high. Can't hit him high. So the guy goes after his knees. Mhm. No more CLs. Snap. All of his CLs torn. Goodbye, CLs. New England fans are understandably crushed by this news. Ha <laughs> ha, crushed, just like his bones. <laughs> and some of the more retarded ones were even surprised by it. <laughs> Joe Torre, Bobby Cox, and Tony La Russa elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Whole bunch of Italians. I guess so, yeah, yeah, two of those at least. So you had Tony La Russa, he won three World Series. He has the third most wins by a manager. Okay. Oh, he's a manager? Yeah, these are all managers. What? No. Yeah, if they're yeah. all managers. What? Are, I mean, I understand you need a manager. Shouldn't get into no Hall of Fames. Well, they get into the Hall of Fame. There's not a lot of managers in the Hall of Fame. It's very yeah. rare. These are, these are all very special cases. I would okay. Say. What about Sparky Anderson? Sparky Anderson. The one manager I know. He's in the Hall of Fame. Is he? Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. Then you had Bobby Cox. So you had uh, Tony La Russa. He was with the A's and the Cardinals, the okay. White Sox for a bit. And you had Bobby Cox. He led uh, the Atlanta Braves to 14th. St- Don't worry, we're getting there. Okay, <laughs> to 14th straight division titles, mm-hmm. but only had one World Series championship. This baffles most baseball fans who cannot believe the dominant pitching of the Atlanta Braves did not lead them to more titles or even really start a dynasty. Or oh yeah, dynasty. Ooh, as the kids are saying Get a these days. Get dynasty. Cox ended his career with the fourth most wins of all time. And Cox also holds the record for most ejections with 159. And he's still made in the Hall of Fame, even still, though he has poor sportsmanship? Although, he see, here's the thing. He explains most of these uh, ejections as a miscommunication with the umpire in which Bobby was speaking in third person and describing himself as a sucker. Ah, I see. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, Joe Torre helmed the Yankee dynasty. Ah, uh, dynasty. Dynasty. ba ba da ba da <laughs> Dynasty. Uh, leading them to four World Series titles. Predictably, the New York Yankees are being dicks about Joe Torre's success because former Yankees owner George Steinbrenner. I remember him from Seinfeld. Right. He was not elected to the Hall of Fame. He is on this. There's a special ballot for, like, managers, owners, executives. Uh, executives? Yeah, uh, uh, like GMs, uh, union leaders for the Players Association. There's, there's a special ballot for all these non-players, right? And so George Steinbrenner did not make it. He did not get even close. And so the Yankees president said this. I think it is a mistake. I congratulate Joe Torre, Bobby Cox, and Tony La Russa. All of them were thoroughly deserving, but I think there is no doubt that George Steinbrenner was one of the greatest figures in the history of the game. He, more than anybody, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Come on. And I fully expect he will be one day, said Randy Levine, Yankees president. All he does is sign checks. That's pretty Sit much. Sit up there, he signed the checks. And do a bunch of shit. He's a convicted felon. Okay. Right? Okay, you got that going for him. All right, him. One, one in the pros column because okay. a lot of baseball players are doing some illegal stuff. Right, but then also in the, in the 80s. He he's he, he had a player named Dave Winfield who he gave a big big deal to right a big uh, thing to yeah and he would become he started not to like him 
So he went to a shady gambler guy and paid him a bunch of money to try to pull up dirt on Dave Winfield. His really? own player, his own employee. Wow. He was spying on. Anyway, That's so, great. So I like him more now. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Right. But so, so Ray Levine speaks his piece about being happy for Joe Torre, you know, through, lying through his teeth and then saying uh, Steinbrenner will be in there one day. Uh, however, not so fast, said God. <laughs> George Steinbrenner, more than anybody, deserves to be rotting in hell. And thanks to me, he totally is. What? Yeah. He dead? Yeah. He gone? Well, he's rotting in hell. There we go. So that was God. Good. God Tim- is good. <laughs> Tim Tebow is 2013's most searched athlete. Tim Tebow is 2013's most searched athlete. Brought to you by Mentos. Feel the rush in Google. Search it. Not Google. Oh. Yeah. So subheadline was not technically a professional athlete for most of this past year. Oh, that's true. But still was the biggest athlete. So search engine, bing! Bing! Announced Tim Tebow was easily the most searched athlete in 2013. Even more than Anna Kornikova? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Who, according to bing! Bing! Data had over 2,000 searches. (laughs) Things are going very well at bing. (laughs) To bing! (laughs) 2,000? That's it? I'm joking. Oh, that that was was doing a bit, because bing uh, sucks, because no one uses it. Right, except it's uh, integrated into Xbox now, so that's probably good for another dozen searches or so. (laughs) (laughs) To give this news story some actual legitimacy, he also tops the Yahoo! Yahoo! list of most Googled, sorry, I mean searched athlete. (laughs) Ha ha. So you want to hear the list of the most? Yeah, let's hear them. Anna Kornikova? Number one. Anna Kornikova, not on the list. Oh, no. uh, Spoiler. soccer player. Right? Actually, these these are just these are actually just U.S. Oh, never mind. I was going to so, say it would probably be that uh, Remy or whatever his yeah, name is. Yeah, it would be him. But no, number one, Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. Number two, Lindsey Vaughn. Oh, Tiger Woods' gal pal. Yeah, number three. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. Yeah. Number four, Kevin Ware. Don't know him. He was the Louisville. I am uh, unaware. <laughs> That's why they pay me the big bucks, Jordan. Joel is not here. I'm so glad Joel uh, is not here. Yeah, he would have loved that. To encourage you, to he slow us. It. That would have been a one-minute laugh riot That would have. Oh, man. Joel's at home listening right now, just laughing until he vomits. He's, he's cackling sick. with glee. Yes. Uh, Kevin Ware was the Louisville basketball player who suffered a gruesome injury in the NCAA tournament last year. Ah, so they were Googling him to try to they find They were Googling injury. the video to see the video, because it happened on the sideline, and it was really gross. Yikes. I'm judging you, society. Ha-ha, <laughs> rubberneckers. Uh, number five, Ray Lewis. He recently retired. Yep. LeBron James, snooze fest. Right, no, he's the guy from the commercials. Yeah, nothing interesting with him anymore. Right. He was he was he was the greatest player, and then he was a villain, and now it's like he's winning, and he's a team player, and it's just it's no fun. Yeah, but he's also in all those commercials. Yeah, some of those commercials are pretty good. Yeah, Chris Humphreys would probably like him. Oh, we should get him back on the show someday. I think probably for the holidays. Yeah, episode 100 next week. Ooh, we'll, we'll probably have some special guests. We there. might. Uh, number seven, Danica Patrick. Ah, she's sexy. Go hubba Daddy. hubba 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 vroom. Yeah, hubba 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 vroom. Chase her up a motorcycle. Uh, Danica Patrick, uh, there was a full-sized cutout of her at what? my work because someone put it in their window, and then somebody told him to take it down because it was uh, inappropriate, I guess, to have Danica was she, Patrick. Was she in uh, something? She scant- was fully clothed. She was in her jumpsuit. Like her race car? Yeah. Well, that's not inappropriate at all. I don't know. It'd be inappropriate if she was in a bikini or something. Yeah, they took it down. I don't know. Weird. They're taking Paterno's statue down. Right. They're taking Danica Patrick cutouts down. Yeah, they knocked over that Saddam Hussein statue in the middle of Iraq. Why are we even going to build statues anymore? Right, no point. Save the bronze. The bronze, James? <laughs> Hashtag athlete element puns. Ha-ha! Oh, bronze isn't an element. Damn it. Uh, but it's a, what is it, a mix? Uh, if Joel were here, he could take us off on a two-minute tangent about this. Oh, I would have hated that. Number eight, Dwight Howard, basketball player. Okay. Number nine, Derek Jeter. Uh, Yankees. Yeah, Yankees, shortstop. The Muppet. Uh, number 10, I think this is what you were looking for. Number 10, Maria Sharapova. Ooh, because she's a tennis player. Don't you just like saying Maria Sharapova? Marvan Sharponi. <laughs> uh, apparently, we have some data here. It says Bing is the second most. Data Patrick? <laughs> Hashtag. Athlete computer puns. <laughs> uh, Bing is the second uh, most used search engine in the U.S. with a 18% share. 
wow. of the market. That's more than I thought it'd be. Want to guess how much Google has? Uh, 82 percent. <laughs> yeah, no. 67. But yeah, yeah, pretty good. Uh, Google said it will release results of uh, of its searches on U.S. athletes uh, later this year. So that will be the real results. Okay. But truly, 67 percent is it? You know. Yeah. That's a uh, much more sizable uh, sample. And it says here, outside the U.S., soccer players dominated. Bing! Bing! Searches throughout the world. We get it, media. Soccer is super popular in the rest of the world. But this seems to indicate the United States is steadily holding the party line of soccer? Nope. Yeah. No parties here. Not for soccer. Joining us now is Kenneth Biggs. Kenneth, uh, you are the parking lot coordinator. The parking lot coordinator for, um, for the for the <laughs> Super Bowl. I can't. Yeah, for the Super Bowl at MetLife Stadium. At MetLife Stadium in East New Rutherford, Jersey, New Jersey. This year, yes. Sounds like the you're parking just... lot coordinator. Right, parking that, lot. I feel like I'm talking and you're talking at the same time. I don't know. I if feel it's like my that too, Kenneth. Not. Well, how about how about you pump the brakes? I'm the interviewer. I pump the brakes. Yeah, yeah, a that's little parking good. lot that humor. Parking lot humor. So, so I guess my question to you, <laughs> Kenneth, please. Yep. No, I'm listening. My question to you. Yeah. Is it's, the Super Bowl? This is about as big as it gets. It's big. It's a real. It's one. Of, it's the biggest event of the year, and I get to be the parking lot coordinator. You do a do bunch. A bunch of stuff. <laughs> I do a bunch of. It's a big job. It is. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. You do eight home games a year for the Giants. You do eight home games a year for, for the, the Jets. Jets. Yep. Eight home games a year for the Giants and eight for the Jets. And now the Super Bowl is coming up, and that's, that's going to be big. It's going to be very big. Well, how are you going to handle, handle all of that traffic that's coming in for the Super Bowl? Yes. Well, I'll tell you, it's, got a lot of, it's a lot of rules and regulations. It, I mean, a society without rules is a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Yes. And, it, yeah, it is. And... Uh, so this year, I don't know if you, if you read, but we released a firm statement that there is going to be tailgating at the Super Bowl. Oh, cause this was up in the air. It was up in the air. It was a little, nobody knew if it was going to be there or not. And, uh, it turns out we decided we can, as long as people keep it within the boundaries of their parking spot. I'm sorry. So you mean it's got, yeah, I mean exactly what you were about to say. But it's going to be in the, <laughs> the bounds of the park. Usually tailgating is done behind, outside. Right, or you have, or two, you have, park- to, you have two parking <laughs> spots, but you don't. This time, this time you're not going to have two parking spots. You you have to get one parking spot because it's very limited parking there. So this is really, really big. It's a big deal. It's really going to be tough for people. To, but it's okay. It's good. Their people are going to have fun. They can drink and eat inside their car. Inside their inside car. Inside their car, they have to they have to eat and drink inside their car, and then they can uh, make merry by having people jump in the back seat. Okay. Yep. So that's how they can tailgate. That's how they tailgate. They have to. They do it inside their car, and people are gonna have a great time because it's really. It's about the tailgate. It's about the camaraderie, jumping from car to car and meeting people. Right now, this is different, different than normal. Normal because normally. People can spill out of the tailgates. street. You're allowed to. No, the tailgates are allowed. Yeah, I didn't normally. say they were allowed. No, now they are too. The, just the tailgate has to happen inside the confines of your car. That's, That's an odd a tailgate. Weird, weird tailgate. <laughs> but people not will get used tailgate. to it. You know what? We have other rules, though, to make well, tailgating both fun and safe. Are there what, what are some more of the other rules new that are going to happen? Because not restrictions. The there are more rules. Restrictions make it sound like you're in prison. You're not in prison. It's a very fun day for everybody. One of the other ones is we, we encourage people to go out there and grill. Yeah? Yeah. People have to go out there, grill, make their meat. They're not allowed to have open flames. How can but you they, grill? You can grill without open flames. You get an electric burner. No, you get an electric burner. You plug it into your cigarette lighter. You open your windows inside your car. And then you make sure that it doesn't get too close to your lap. I guess that would be one way. one way to do it. That's one way to do it. I feel like we're talking at the same time. Is it just me? No, it seems like no, every it's time not we're just ta- you. Every time I start talking, it feels like you start talking too. <laughs> every time I every start time talking, we both we're just at the same time. It's like we're finishing each other's sentences. sentences. Yeah, true. We're finishing there it each is. other's sentences. We need to we have good, nice synergy good, here. Good synergy, yeah. So, so no else? open flames. But no open there, flames. But there's others. There's others. What else? For people love throwing around the pigskin. 
in oh, the parking lot. Yeah. People really enjoy throwing around the pigskin. It's a great it's tailgate a great activity. Time to do. It's a great time to do it. And you can throw around the pigskin. We encourage it as long as there's no fl- flying projectiles in the parking lot. That is a rule. No how, flying projectiles. How would one toss how, the one football? One would toss the football. How would, that, one, do how would one do it? Is very, it's very, Without there a flying projectile. There is a way projectile. to do it. And the what way that you that? do it is you say, go long. Somebody goes to the, all the way to the far end of the back seat, and you go to the far end of the front seat of your car, and then you you dive over everybody and hand them the ball nicely. All right, you hand them the ball, and then that's they say mm. caught it. It's more like that's a handoff. The handoff, I know it is, but it's also a lot of fun. People have to get study their handoffs too. If they want to make it to the big game, the Super Bowl, which I'm going to be the parking lot head parking lot attendant for. What else? What other what rules, other rules are there going to be? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Where do I even begin? Uh, well, I guess I already started. Uh, the, the another. Oh, people. Uh, people love to sit in their lawn chairs and drink a beer. Right. Yeah. People love to sit in their lawn chairs, have a have a nice cold brewski as long as it's in the confines of their parking spot. If they drive, say, a smart car. Yeah. However, there's no lawn chairs allowed. <laughs> so. People have to get in their lawn chair time before they go to the big game. Could they sit they on the blacktop? They could sit on the blacktop if and they just want to. Crack as long open as a beer? Uh, no alcohol allowed outside of the car. No, And in the car, the engine can't be running. And you should probably hide it when cops walk by. <laughs> but that, hey, I'm, I'm not a police officer. I'm just the parking lot attendant. So, so you're telling some people some insider info. Insider info. You're getting it straight from me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's... <laughs> There's still more. There's one more. This is the most important one. The biggest one. one? The biggest one Kenneth is, Biggs, what's the biggest big, one? Big, yeah, there we go. That's why they call me Kenneth Biggs. That and it's because it's my last name. But the biggest one is, oh, what do people like more than anything at tailgates? I would That's say That's right. It's absolutely <laughs> true. What they like is trying anything. to get autographs <laughs> from their biggest... From the person that's about to go play a big game, right? Okay. To get the autographs. And, sure. And we know that these people are out there, and we respect their ability to go get these autographs because we know they're huge fans. The NFL wouldn't exist without the fans. They're only there because of them. Right. So we say, by all means, get your autographs. However, you're not allowed any writing implements, anything that can be written on or within 500 feet of a player. But you can get autographs. You autograph. can get an autograph. That's not the part that's outlawed or rule. It's not the rule. How you just can't do it through traditional means. How would how one, would go one on? do it? It's easy. All right. So writing implements are illegal, right? So you need to find right. something that's not a writing implement to write with. Say blood or spit. Or a muddy so stick. So a muddy stick, you could. <laughs> So perhaps you eat a bunch of ink and then vomit it and then write with your tongue. However, you can also have nothing to write it on. However, you still have to allow people to wear clothes, right? Yeah. So you need to get ink out of your mouth that you then vomit onto your clothes. And then you put the clothes into a a carrier pigeon and say, go find my favorite player. The carrier pigeon drops off the the ink-stained shirt onto the player. And, of course, the player... Since they can't have writing implements either, then have to, with their finger, draw in their, their signature and then give it back to the carrier pigeon to bring it back. Kenneth. Yep. Does, does a carrier, the carrier pigeon, pigeon, is it going to be trained? Does it count yep. as, the, a as a flying project- projectile? <laughs> That's an excellent point. Never mind. Don't get autographs. Thank you it was much. a pleasure being here. <laughs> For you, the listeners of Sports 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 Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. I personally recommend a wonderful book called The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Joel saw the movie. He said that it was okay. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash comedypodcastnetwork. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash comedypodcastnetwork for your free audiobook. And now it's time for another Weird Sports! Weird Sports. What do we got this week? For the second to last weird sport ever in history. This is Weird Sport 99. 99, because you know it's fine. Weird Sport 99, kite fighting. 
Kite fighting. Kite fighting. All right, I'm I'm interested. All right, just making sure you're interested. Kite fighting is the uh, sport uh, centered around the fighting of kites. Fighter kites are kites. Fighter kites. Yep, fighter kites are. The, is there in the name of the kites that are used in kite fighting? Traditionally, most are small, unstable, single line, flat kites where the line tension alone is used for control, and an abrasive line is used to cut down other kites. <laughs> Yeah. So there's one line on the kite that yep. is just for like, oh, I'm flying a kite, I'm having fun. And there's another line that is like like is sandpaper or yeah, something exactly. like that that will like tear through other kites. You kite. have to fly that line into other kites, cut down them kites. That just sounds like this sounds like an area where there could be a lot of kite bullying. Yeah, right? Doesn't this whole sport is centered around bullying? Like I go like, to oh, the you park. having fun with your kite? Cut down. Zoom. Yeah. Zoom. Uh, kite fighting is done in many countries. But is particularly associated with number one, as you can probably guess. Come on, it's obvious. Britain, Britain, Afghanistan. Yeah. Afghanistan. That's, that's right, Afghanistan. Well, uh, you know, maybe it's all the drones. Probably yes. They're, they're just, just like those. They're not drones. They're kite fighters. <laughs> uh, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Vietnam, Korea, and in the slums of Brazil. I would say these are some of the friendliest places on the globe. Yeah, exactly. They're not known for bullying. What? No, no I, nothing, nothing. Don't look at me like that. I, I, did, I didn't, I didn't mean to look at you like that. Okay. Kite fighting. Kite fighting. Uh, materials. In most uh, traditional fighter kite manufacture, the skins of kites are made from lightweight, thin paper. And the spars are usually made from lightweight and flexible wood. Spars? Yeah, the, just, oh, the spars just, are oh, okay. the cross on the kite. Okay. Yep. Uh, usually bamboo. In modern American fighters, American, uh, the kite skins are made from a variety of synthetic materials, mylar, aircraft insulation, uh, nylon, polyester sheeting. The spine can be bamboo, but is often a bow constructed of fiber class or carbon fiber. No, that is that's not a traditionalist yeah, kite. Not the slums of Brazil, I'll tell you what. No. Paper and wood. That's easy. what they need. Easy peasy, Brazilian easy. Uh the line. Historically for most Asian type of fighters, a thin cotton or hemp line is coated with a mixture of finely crushed glass or Oh rice my god! Wood. This yeah. sounds really dangerous. It could be. Coated with finely crushed glass? Very finely, though. You know what finely, really finely crushed glass is? It's like sand, right? No. No, I bet that's not true. I was going to say, that that cannot be true. Because I've gotten little pieces of glass stuck in my foot. To makes your tootsies hurt. Right. Sand, nothing but pleasant. Right. Glass? Forget. I've seen Die Hard. Uh, yeah, traditionally, players use a paste of some sort to toughen their line. The primary component of this includes glue and crushed glass, depending on personal preference and other materials added to improve the properties of the line. This sounds like it was invented by a, a mad scientist. You know what? It kind of was. Really? Think about it. It sounds like it was someone that was excluded from a kite like, hey, we're all going to the park. We're going to fly kites. No, you can't come, Ted. Yeah, and then and Ted goes like, to his basement. I'll show you. I'll invent a fighter kite. And then he was crushing glass with his teeth out of anger. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> names for kites. Uh, <laughs> Spectra is a brand of fishing line used for American kite fighting. Power Pro is a very thin braided fishing line used in American kite fighting. Manhra is a cutting line used in Indian, India and Pakistan. Tar. Is a cutting line used in Afghanistan. Hilo du Caprencia o Hilo Coroda is a cutting line used in Chile. Dore is India and Pakistan, the string used to fly a kite. Sharper the string, better it is. And Pench is when uh, two or more kites are fighting one another in India. It's in those two kites are in a pinch. They're in a pinch match. Yeah. Pinch. I'm going to skip all these. There's a lot of like things on bridal and tuning and stuff like that let's get straight to the kite fighting uh when a kite is flown and line is taut a kite is deformed by the wind pressure giving it a degree of stability when the line tension is reduced either by letting out more line or the flyer moving into the wind the kite will become unstable and rock from side to side or in extreme cases even spin 
By reapplying tension at the right moment, the kite will move in the direction that the flyer requires. So then you can knock, knock it right in that other kite. Right. You can show them what's what. Although a spool that allows rapid winding and release is often used, often the flyer will fly the kite by holding the line itself uh, with one or more assistants to help manage the slack of the line between the flyer and the spool. Oh, that's kind of lame. Yeah. You should, it's, it's, this is mano y mano. Yeah. It's your kite fighting. It's not a team. But uh, like with any sport, Taliban has to come and ruin it. Oh, no. From 1996 to 2001, the Taliban government in Afghanistan outlawed kite fighting and kite flying, declaring it un-Islamic. That is so typical of them. I know, right? Kite flying, Right up until 2001, the Taliban were these big bad guys trying to ruin the kite flying. After 2001, though, it was all, all in the clear. I, I imagine they, they relented on the kite flying due to intense public pressure. Right, exactly. After the fall of the Taliban government, kite flying has returned. Yes! Country. It's back. Uh, the Caribbean. Most Caribbean ha- kites are hexagonal, flown with a tail. Instead of cutting with a glass-coated line, they use sharp objects, <laughs> literally razor blades, attached to the tails of the... You uh, said razor blades. Yep, razor blades. Attached to the tails to try to clo, uh, which is Creole for drop, other kites. Try to slice them up with razor blades. <laughs> Sounds really dangerous. Really dangerous, right? But nothing compares to Japan. The Nagasaki Hata is similar to the Indian Patang, uh, which is believed to have been introduced in Japan from Indonesia by Dutch traders. It's highly maneuverable and fought uh, with glass-coated line in cutting contests, similar in the way kite fighting is done in other countries. Uh, you know what? This one's not as bad. For some reason, I thought this one was one of the bad ones. I'm looking for... Well, they're very tasteful. Earlier. They're very tasteful. Very, tasteful. very peaceful people. Uh, you know what? Let's just cut down to the most important festival for kite flying. I was really hoping this was going to be injuries. Oh, you know what? Let's skip ahead because this is the last one we can do. Accidents! In India, yes! Pakistan, and Chile, there have been reported accidents involving abrasive coated cutting line. <laughs> These accidents don't range say. Uh, in, severely, uh, in severity from small cuts on the fighter's fingers to a few reported deaths <laughs> from contact to the line while riding motorcycles. In recent years, the fighting lines have evolved from traditional cotton, rice, and glass line to nylon and synthetic line coated with metallic or chemical abrasive compounds. No! They're talking about acid. No! Don't do that! To prevent further injury, many countries have implemented uh, restrictions or bans on the use of cutting line. Some who have set limits on the materials used to make the line. Others have mandated safety devices on motorcycles when riding during kite festivals. We would have talked about the motorcycles during the <laughs> kite festivals. Uh, now there's safety gear that's oftentimes run, worn by fighters and professional Gloves, medicine. I would hope. Gloves. Um, acid-proof face masks. <laughs> uh, and so forth. And, and of course, we're, there are new motorcycle restrictions for when you happen to be driving through a kite fighting yeah, festival. Yeah, I assume you have to wear, like, a leather cap. And that brings an end to another Weird Sports! Citizens of Podcast Town, this brings to the close another sports! Sports! Podcast. Before we go, Phil will give you our contact information. You can email us at sports, sports, sports podcast at gmail.com. That's sports, sports, sports podcast at gmail.com. You can tweet at us at sports number three podcast. That's at sports the number three podcast. You can find us on Facebook by searching sports, sports, sports podcast. It'll top our thingy. You can find us on Stitcher Radio. Download the Stitcher app today at stitcher.com and search sports, sports, sports podcast. You can find us on YouTube by going to youtube.com slash comedy pod net. That's youtube.com slash comedy pod net. While you're there, please subscribe and comment and so forth. You can find us on uh, 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 Stitcher Radio. Stitcher Radio. Download the Stitcher app today. It's, I already said that one. iTunes. You can find us on iTunes by going to Sports the Number Three Space Podcast. That's Sports the Number Three, all one word, Space Podcast. Or find all of our back episodes at ComedyPodcastNetwork.com. Why did it feel like I missed one? Did you do YouTube? Yeah, I did YouTube. Did you do the uh, Comedy Podcast? Okay. We don't have an Instagram. Or a Vine. You know, we really should, though. We should. If you want an Instagram, email us at sports, sports, sports podcast, gmail.com. Let us know. 
All right, you got any uh, payoffs you'd like to do in lieu of Joel being here? Nope. Lights off. You have received this transmission from the Comedy Podcast Network. For more shows, visit ComedyPodcastNetwork.com.